Why do interest rates keep going up? And when is it going to stop? Somebody help! Ah! Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, I'm Natalie Bratton with the Bratton Real Estate Group at Remax First in Oklahoma City. And this fall, as the market has been slowing down, and every time you look on the news, there's talk about the Federal Reserve and what's going on in the market. And the big question is, why are rates rising and when is it going to stop? So today on my channel here, I'm going to talk about that and what it means for future home buyers and sellers here in Oklahoma. So let's talk about it. This is a beginner's guide using normal words and language, no fancy charts, just an explanation from a regular gal. Okay, Federal Reserve is the nation's bank. They decide how much money they print out and their job is to control inflation and unemployment. In 2007, when the Great Recession hit, they started pumping money into our economy and they gave out all kinds of incentives through tax credits and programs so that we could all have money and they lowered interest rates to buy money. And so the rates on all of our loans got a lot lower in 2007 and beyond. Many people refinanced in those years or bought their homes and we were really happy to get like five or five and a half for our interest rate. And that's what they did to help people get out of the recession. And they wanted to stimulate the economy and get us out spending money so that businesses would flourish. And that has been going on for years and years and years. And just as interest rates were going back up and things were starting to slow down a little bit, the pandemic happened and there was big panic of how to get the economy going. So instead of coming back to kind of a medium ground, they, the pendulum swung way far this direction and they printed out trillions of dollars. Then also interest rates are the lowest they've ever been in history. I mean, we all refinanced and bought houses because the rates were unsustainably low. And so we knew it was temporary and we all took advantage of it. And all with all these tax credits, we were all at home, not going anywhere, not doing anything. So we all started spending money, right? And planning elaborate vacations for when it's over. So we've all been enjoying feeling pretty wealthy. The pandemic was not fun, so I'm not making light of it. But financially, many of us have been sitting in really good shape. And so the supply and demand problem has come. And so there comes inflation. I want to buy a house. There's not a house for me to buy. So if I buy a house, I have to pay $50,000 more than I should. I want to buy a car. There's no cars on the car lot. So the one I buy is going to be $10,000 more than it should be. It's the same with toilet paper. It's the same with garage doors, steel, lumber. I mean, it doesn't matter. Inflation has hit every product because we are spending more than we have. The demand is there. The supply is not. And so prices have risen. So the Federal Reserve Board is like, we have to control this. And it seems like maybe they were a little behind, but they started raising rates and they told us they were going to do it. It's just, it ended up being far worse than any of us expected. So they have risen the rate, their policy rate for what banks buy money from them. That rate is the, they've had the biggest rate hike they've had since 2007. So, the rate to buy that money has gone up so much. And so the rate for any loan has gone up as well. So now you find yourself where you were thinking you were going to buy or sell a home over the next year. And now you're wondering what to do because rates are at 7% interest. If you bought a home in the past at 12% or 16%, you're like, eh, we'll survive. But for anybody who is just come around to being in real estate. Maybe you're younger than me and maybe you bought your first home over the last 15 years. 7% seems like a lot. So what do we do about it? Let's talk about what this means 
for home buyers and home sellers and future investors. Mm -hmm.